You know, in a perfect world, all of our research data would be neat, tidy, and predictable. But let's be honest, especially in health research, data is almost always messy, it's unpredictable, and it rarely, if ever, follows the textbook rules. So what do you do when your data breaks those rules? Well, today we're diving into the statistical toolkit that was literally designed for the real world. This is the big question, isn't it? We all learn about these incredibly powerful statistical tools, like t-tests and ANOVA, but they all come with this huge catch. They assume our data fits that perfect, beautiful bell curve. But what happens when real-world patient data, your data, doesn't play by the rules? So on one side, you've got this parametric ideal, this gorgeous symmetrical normal distribution. But the reality of health research, it looks a lot different. Our data can be skewed by a few patients with extreme outcomes. We might have outliers that are totally real and clinically important, or maybe we're just working with a small, precious sample from a pilot study. And in these situations, those ideal tests can actually lead us to the wrong conclusions. So here's our game plan. First, we're going to dig into why that perfect world of statistics often fails us. Then we'll introduce the really elegant solution. And from there, we'll build a practical toolkit you can use to compare groups and find relationships in pretty much any data set you'll ever come across. All right, let's jump right in. To really get why the solution is so cool, we first have to get a solid handle on the problem we're actually trying to solve. Okay, think of parametric tests like they're precision surgical tools. They are incredibly powerful, no doubt about it, but they only work under very specific conditions. And the biggest rule of all is that your data needs to fit that classic bell curve. If it doesn't, or if your sample size is tiny, using that precision tool is kind of like using a scalpel when you really need a wrench. It can give you very misleading results. But don't worry because there is absolutely a hero in this story. Non-parametric tests are the flexible, robust alternative. You can think of them as the statistics that were designed for the real world where data isn't always perfect. So what are they exactly? Well, simply put, non-parametric tests are methods that don't need our data to fit any specific shape or distribution. That's why you'll often hear them called distribution-free. They're like the all-terrain vehicles of statistics. They are built to handle the rough, bumpy landscapes of real data. So here's the secret sauce. How do these tests manage all this messy data? The answer is brilliantly simple. They ignore the actual values and focus on their ranks. You just take your data, sort it from smallest to largest, and then replace every single value with its rank, first, second, third, and so on. This one simple move completely neutralizes the effect of crazy outliers and skewed distributions. We're no longer asking how high are these numbers. Instead, we're asking which group consistently gets the higher ranks. It's a total game changer. All right, let's start building our practical toolkit. Probably the most common thing we do in research is compare two groups. So let's see what non-parametric tools we've got in our box for that. Let's kick things off with that classic before and after study. You measure a group of patients, you give them a treatment, and then you measure them again. Normally, you'd reach for a paired t-test, but what if the amount of improvement, that difference between before and after, doesn't form a nice bell curve? That's when you call in our first hero, the Wilcoxon signed rank test. For instance, take this study on gastric emptying. Researchers measured it in 12 patients before and then again after surgery. Instead of looking at the raw scores, what the Wilkerson test does is it calculates the difference for each patient. It ranks those differences, and then it simply checks if the positive ranks, the improvements, systematically outweigh the negative ones. Simple as that. Okay, but what if your groups are totally separate, like a treatment group versus a placebo group? Your standard tool there is the independent t-test. But if your data is skewed or just plain weird, you just swap it out for the Mann-Whitney u-test. It basically does the same job, but it does it by comparing the ranks of the two groups after you've mixed them all together. A perfect example is this study comparing cadmium levels in smoking versus non-smoking mothers. You've got two completely independent groups, so the Mann-Whitney U-test is the perfect choice. It would take all 32 measurements, rank them from the very lowest to the very highest, and then ask a really simple question. Are the ranks for the smoking mothers consistently clustered up at the higher end? So comparing two groups? Sorted. But we all know research is rarely that simple. What happens when you have three, four, or even more groups you need to compare all at once? When you're comparing three or more independent groups, the usual go-to parametric test is ANOVA. Well, its non-parametric equivalent is the Kruskal-Wallis test. You can just think of it as an extension of the Mann-Whitney U test, but for multiple groups. 
It'll tell you if there's a significant difference somewhere among your groups, based on their average ranks. So consider a study looking at calcium intake across four different age groups of women. Now, dietary data is notoriously messy and all over the place. So the Kruskal wallace test is the ideal tool here. It ranks all the women's calcium intake together, from lowest to highest, and then it tells us if at least one of those age groups has a significantly different pattern of ranks than the others. Now, for the flip side, what if you're measuring the same exact group of people under three or more different conditions? This is super common in drug trials, right? A patient might get a placebo, then drug A, then drug B. The parametric version is a repeated measures ANOVA. And our non-parametric solution, the Friedman test. Just imagine a study on Tourette's, where researchers count the number of ticks in the same patients under four different conditions, no drug, and then three different treatments. For each individual patient, the test ranks their four conditions. The Friedman test then just adds up those ranks and checks if the totals for each condition are significantly different. It's a great way to see if the treatments actually have different effects. Okay, we've totally covered comparing groups, but sometimes we're not looking for differences between groups, we're looking for relationships. How do we measure the connection between two variables when our data is, you know, unconventional? Let's check out our final tool. So, to see how two variables are related, we usually reach for the Pearson correlation, but that test is specifically looking for a straight line relationship. What if the connection is more of a curve? Or what if your data is already in ranks, like from a survey? Well, for that, our hero is the Spearran rank correlation. For example, let's say researchers want to know if a nursing student's rank in their graduating class is related to their rank on an emotional maturity scale. See, since both variables are already ranks, Spearman correlation is the absolute perfect fit. It just tells us if students who rank higher in class also tend to rank higher or maybe lower in emotional maturity. And that right there brings us to our complete toolkit. As you can see, for every single common scenario where you'd normally use a parametric test, there's a robust, reliable, non-parametric counterpart waiting for you. The big takeaway here isn't that one type is better than the other, but that you have a choice. You can now pick the right tool for the job, the tool that actually respects the true nature of your data. So, the next time you're looking at your data, just ask yourself this. Is my statistical test telling the true story of my data? Because choosing the right tool isn't just a technicality, it's about scientific honesty. By embracing these flexible, powerful, non-parametric methods, you're not just running a test, you are letting your data speak for itself, no matter how messy it might be. Thanks for watching.